Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skincare, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training in anything, I just have people ask me questions sometimes about different things, so I just started a YouTube channel to share my thoughts. So, um, before I get started, I just uh, want to let everybody know I'm sort of using and doing some things in this video that I, I've talked about before. So, this is my hair with the sock curl system thing. And I actually haven't touched this up at all. I usually touch it up with a curling iron, but I thought it looked, I, I don't know, I thought it looked pretty good today. Um, I'm also using the um, eyeshadow from my October um, Allure Beauty box that was in the little bento, the little stack of things. Um, and I have the hide concealer on under my eyes, and that's the only um, makeup I have, like, on my face it's just some concealer under my eyes so anyway um all right so uh you know i do like talking about self-care and so um over the past 20 months with the freaking plague you know everybody has been deprived of seeing their friends and family and we're starting to open up again um and that includes you know people coming to your house maybe for a, a dinner you know dinner party and so i just thought i would do a short video about some things to think about when you're sort of putting a dinner party together because it can seem really intimidating. It can also seem like deceptively easy. It'd be like, well, it's just food. Like, what's the big deal? And granted, you know, everybody can, of course, just like get pizza from your favorite pizza place and have your friends over. Like, that's cool. Awesome. That's a type of dinner party too. Um, but what I've started to do a little bit is have like a, like a grown-up dinner thing. So like last week I had um, a tea party. <laughs> so that included not only tea, but you know, scones and um, appetizers and drinks and you know, some sort of light entertainment for my friends. And so that was five people. I had to make sure I had enough food for that. Um, and so I just thought I would talk about some, some basics of things, right? So when you're planning your dinner party, um, there's a couple things to consider. Uh, you want to consider how many people you can comfortably have in your home um, and how many people you can sort of comfortably have like based on your own mental state at the moment because like I could have 20 people in my house I don't think I want to have 20 people in my house right now like I don't think I'm ready for that big of a party um so consider how many people you want to invite um additionally you know what types of personalities do your friends have are different groups going to mix easily are these people going to get along with each other do they know each other already um the party I had last week I was the only single person um the other two were were two couples and so it's like well, if, is that gonna like make somebody feel weird if they're like the fifth wheel or whatever, which I didn't feel weird at all. Um, so there's a lot of things to consider there when who to invite. And so, um, you know, on that train of thought, it's like, okay, well, how do you wanna deal with the COVID situation? Because unfortunately we're still dealing with it. So um, my friend that had a party last week, she basically asked everybody to have a negative test within 24 hours of the party or to show proof of vaccination, which I'm totally fine with. I know it's kind of a hot button issue for some people. They get a little sort of like sensitive to it. Um, but you know, it's, it's something that kind of just has to be done. And I think, I think this is a good opportunity to continue to get used to it, that this is that like, there's some questions that we're going to have to ask people in the future for our own sense of safety. Um, and you should never put your own sense of safety aside for like, I don't want to bother somebody, which is something that I would do, um, before, before the plague here. Um, so there's that whole situation. And so then, you know, what kind of atmosphere do you want to create? So everybody has different types of friends, right? Everybody has the friend that like is super loud. Everybody has introvert friends, extrovert friends, people that really like drinking, people that don't like drinking. And so we want to make sure we have a good mix of people together. Um, especially for like a, a dinner party where everybody is sort of in close quarters and we're, we're, you know, eating a meal together as opposed to just like a regular party where you're just inviting people to it. Um, so now we have to start thinking about... Um, the food that we want to have. So the food is really like the main event, right? So it's good to have um, different types of food, uh, especially considering some people might have some allergies or some preferences um, or some like dietary restrictions that they want to sort of adhere to. It's good to ask people those things beforehand. Um, but also sometimes like, you know, it's like, I'm just, I'm not in the mood right now to like eat a fried thing. So if you only have like warm, cheesy phyllo dough, type appetizers, then that might not be great for, for all of your guests. Um, and it's really important to think about what all of your guests are gonna want because the party, it's like, oh, you're, I'm throwing a party at my house and it's sort of for me and like it is, but it's, it's really for your guests. You're trying to make sure your guests have a good time. So um, the party I'm having today is pretty small. I, I guess I could just call it a dinner. I don't know if it's like a dinner party. Um, so it's just gonna be another couple and myself. And I've been to their house, but they haven't been to mine. Um, so. Uh, what I've decided to do is I have some warm appetizers from Trader Joe's. Trader Joe's makes fantastic finger food. If you have one near you, they have tons of appetizers. They're all delicious. So um, my personal favorite is one I have today called Pastry Pups. 
And so it's a little, it's mini hot dogs basically. And they're wrapped in puff pastry and they have like Parmesan cheese on them. And so my local grocery store, Wegman, sells a version of pastry puffs. It is $11 for 10 mini hot dogs. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do it. I can't do it. Um, and Trader Joe's is kind of far away from me. Like I have to like make a trip to go there. Um, but my mom was kind enough to get me some pastry puffs. So I have those. I have like these weird little um, triangle shaped quesadillas type things. It's like a quesadilla roll up doohickey. But that's my second warm appetizer. Then I'm also going to have carrots and um, um, carrots and oh my gosh, pepper strips. Uh, along with some hummus. So there's something like a little bit more healthy. Then I'm gonna have sort of like a cheese plate. So I have um, a goat cheese, I have piave, which is a uh, really nice, uh, it's hard but not too hard, mild cheese. Um, and uh, maybe some crackers, but I also made homemade bread. The bread, you actually, you can kind of see it in the in the frame there. Um, the bread didn't come out quite the way I wanted it to, but it's still good, still edible, still gonna have it. Um, so I haven't decided if it's, that, if it's bread or crackers. And then I also have some tortillas. So that's gonna be all of my appetizers. Then for the main course, I have been working on making um, real Italian carbonara. Um, so carbonara does not contain any cream. It's actually a very simple recipe, um, the, the, like the actual recipe from Rome that's like thousands of years old. So you get some guanciale, which is um, Italian bacon basically that has more fat in it. Um, so you can substitute for pancetta or for bacon, but the real recipe calls for the guanciale. It's from the, the cheek of the pig basically. Um, and it's in different uh, spices as well as pan than pancetta. That's one of the big differences. So you fry some of that up. You make your pasta. Uh, stereotypically, it's a long, skinny pasta, so like a bucatini or a spaghetti or an angel hair linguine, something like that. And then you toss the pasta in the, um, the oil from the guanciale as well as the guanciale itself. And then you add your mixture of uh, eggs or egg yolks. I find that egg yolks work the best. They have to be very fresh eggs. They have to be room temperature eggs. Um, and that's mixed with Pecorino Romano cheese, not Parmesan. Um, and uh, hopefully if you do it right, you make a nice creamy sauce with all of that. If you don't do it right, you get scrambled eggs and pasta. So um, I'm gonna make that. Uh, the thing with that though, is that I have to make that and then serve it immediately. So I have to like be distracted from my guests for a little while. And that could be a factor in what you're preparing for your dinner party. Um, because you know you wanna be able to talk to your guests and, and you know catch up with them and, and actually like have a minute. So how many things can we prepare in advance? Um, so what I prepared in advance is like the vegetables are all cut up. Um, the, um, uh, the bread, I already made, uh, uh, baked the bread. I already have the desserts ready to go. I'm gonna set up my drink station and my appetizer stations before they get here because they're not gonna be here for a little while. Um, and so that way the only, really the only thing that I'm doing that's going to distract me from my guests is going to be putting in the frozen appetizers into the oven, um, and then actually making the, uh, the pasta, which is not a ton of like active time once I actually like put everything together. Um, and so, um, it's good to have recipes and different things that you can just sort of do and like not have to worry about them so much. So another good recipe is a garlic chicken recipe that my mom showed me. So you get chicken thighs. You get a, uh, a bulb, at least a full bulb of garlic and um, rosemary and um, white wine vinegar. That's all you need for this recipe. So you coat the bottom of the pan with um, the cloves of garlic. You don't need to unshell them. You can just like literally just break the clove apart and throw it in the pan. Then rosemary, put the chicken thighs on top of it, skin up, then put more garlic, more rosemary on top, cook the chicken. Um, once it's done and you take the chicken out of the pan, it's gonna be nice and crispy on the top and everything. Um, the oil and the fat that's left, you just mix it with the white wine vinegar and that's your sauce and you're done. And it's a very easy recipe. Um, it's gluten-free, dairy-free. Uh, it's not vegan, obviously. Um, it's you know good for paleo, but it's just, it's so easy. And it's, it's even easy to put together like beforehand. You just put all the chicken in a pan and cover the pan and put it in your fridge. And then when you're ready to go, put it in the oven and then just wait for the chicken to be done. Um, so that's a very easy recipe. It's good to have some of those things in the back of your head. So something like a casserole is really easy. Something that like you've frozen um, and you made before. Something that you can buy already made from the store. Um, I just, I grew up, my mom like made everything. We cater a lot more things now and like buy out a lot more. But but growing up, it was sort of instilled in me to, to make as much as I can myself. So I tend to do that. But there's nothing wrong with buying everything store-bought and just gathering these things together so your friends have a lovely meal. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Um, so then for dessert, um, once again, easy stuff is good to have. A cake that you can take out of the fridge. A fruit salad you can take out of the fridge. Uh, ice cream you can take out of the freezer. Just very easy things because the point there is to be there with your friends and, and hang out with them. So what I have is I bought some scones from a bakery that's down the street from me. They make the best scones. 
Um, so I, I, I have problems not eating them when they're in my house. And then I made some chocolate chip cookies. I know chocolate chip cookies are similar to scones, um, sort of, you know, that's like a small baked good type thing. Um, but I told this couple about these cookies. I almost made them like on the fly when I was at their house last time. We didn't end up making them. So I just wanted to make them because I've, I've talked about them a lot. So, um, and then I also have vanilla ice cream to go with it. Um, as far as drinks go, so uh, a lot of your guests are probably going to ask you like what they can bring. Um, my suggestion would be for them to bring like something small. So, uh, you know, a small appetizer, a dessert, or like a side. Never expect your guests to bring like the main portion of the meal. If it's a potluck, that's, that's a little bit different, but, um, in general, I wouldn't, I wouldn't suggest that you ask them to do that. Um, most people, when they go to somebody's house, if they're expected to bring something, they're going to bring alcohol. Um, I'm not a huge drinker myself, but like you could always tell your guests, like bring whatever alcohol you would like to drink. Um, cause that, that way, you know, at least, you know, you're going to, they're, they're gonna have something that they, they wanna drink. Um, as far as drinks tonight are concerned, I have um, from Trader Joe's, well, I have a hair on my face, it's tickling me. Um, from Trader Joe's, I have this um, cranberry ginger canned beverage that's really good, so that'll mix nicely with vodka. I also have um, peach tea that's sparkling in cans, so that'll mix well with vodka as well. I bought some vodka um, earlier today because I, I had run out, so I have a full bottle. Um, and then I also have uh, diet iced tea that's sweetened with monk fruit and um, some beers and water. And like that's all of the drinks that I'm, I'm gonna have. I'm not gonna stress myself out over, over the drinks. Um, and anybody honestly that makes you feel bad about the food or the drinks that you serve, like we should probably analyze why they're doing that. And you know, your, your friends are, are not gonna do that. Um, your friends are gonna wanna be with you as a person. They're not gonna, like a true friend is not really gonna care what you serve them. Um, like they care, like they, it's good that you're thoughtful, but like that shouldn't, that shouldn't be the main impetus for them hanging out with you. Um, so um, the last thing to consider is possible entertainment for your friends while they're here. So it could be just as easy as you're sitting around a table for a few hours and you're just talking and that's, that's it. Um, I have a friend that throws a lot of parties and she does really cool parties. So like um, one of the last ones I went to was uh, she hired somebody that is good at astrology, which I know there's some people have different opinions on astrology. Um, but basically this woman was, uh, was very well versed in astrology and it focused around, uh, Venus and sort of where it is in your astrological chart because it was around Valentine's day. And so she taught us how to use astrology just as a different way to think about things. Not as like, Oh, I'm a Leo. So I'm selfish. I am a Leo. Um, but like, it's not that kind of thing. It's more like just a different way to think about stuff and help you think through who you are, which I think is really interesting. Um, she's done that. She's done like an introduction to burlesque party. She's done like a murder mystery party. Um, she's done, uh, uh, oh, dinner parties where a financial planner comes and like talks about financial planning stuff. So there's a lot of really cool options, but like if you don't wanna spend money on things, then that's just as easy. Like you could get Cards Against Humanity, especially when you have like four or more people and you just purchase that card game once and you're kind of set to play a game for a while. Um, there's a lot of things online that you can look up of like um, icebreakers for parties or ways to get conversation going. So one of the things we did at the last, the, la the very last party I went to for this friend, um, she put up a, a version of Never Have I Ever of like, um, you know, I've been to Asia, I've run a marathon, I've, you know, sung in the Kimmel Center, I've done this, I've done that. And um, uh, you were supposed to write your name if you had done the thing. So we got a little confused, but that was okay. It was fun. It was a fun icebreaker and a way to, you know, just kind of get people talking and, and entertain each other. Um, so that's sort of the last thing to think about. Um, but it can just be as easy as, you know, sitting around a table and, and catching up. So, um, so yeah, so the basic things to think about are the type of party you want to have. So that's going to be impacted by the size, the ambiance, the food, the vibe in general that you want to sort of do. Um, the people to invite, your menu, and any entertainment things that you might want to sort of have on decks. So that's the basics of throwing a dinner party. So if, uh, if anybody has any questions about anything, I am happy to answer them. As always, put them in the box down below. Um, but other than that, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a really great rest of your day. Bye.